next award, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Chito Gonzalez of Western Union. Good evening, everyone. Congratulations to all winners. And for this category, the nominees themselves are winners. But among the winners, there is a champion. <laughs> the next award goes to a husband and wife team. If there is real teamwork, this is teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Loli Rico and Francisco Rico Martinez recognize tonight for their efforts in the area of access to information. Loli and Francisco are co-founders of the FCJ Refugee Center in Toronto. Both Loli and Francisco were heavily involved in issues of social justice in their native El Salvador. After arriving in Canada as refugees themselves in 1990, they were exposed to the many issues facing refugees in Canada at the time. Their experience inspired Loli and Francisco to found the FCJ Refugee Center. Francisco is the past president of the Canadian Council for Refugees and is a recipient of the William P. Hubert Race Relations Award, as well as the YMCA Peace Medallion. Lolly has been recognized for her commitment to social justice and women's rights with the Constance E. Hamilton Award, as well as YMCA Peace Medallion. The FCJ Refugee Center helps uprooted people overcome the challenges of rebuilding their lives in Canadian society. With an open door approach, this center offers an integrated model of refugees protection, settlement services, and education, including shelter for women and their children. Please welcome me. And join me to welcome Loli, Rico, and Francisco Martin. Let me talk first. There <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a real pleasure to be here. Uh, I just want to say two things uh, before we start with our performance speeches. Um, when we came to Canada 23 years ago, uh, the first bank account that we opened was with CABC. <laughs> <laughs> we are still, still having uh, the same bank account, <laughs> personally. And we discussed once in a while when we are going to receive something from CABC. <laughs> Maybe this is it. <laughs> So, thank you, uh, the second thing is, uh, we, we have used Western Union, of course, services, <laughs> to send, uh, you know, some donations back home. Uh, we sometimes discuss what we are going to receive from the, uh, the, the day having come yet. So, maybe today. <laughs> Not for us, but for our organization. Um, first of all, I want to introduce, uh, and, and it's not because I am a gentleman that ladies go first. Uh, I, am, I want to introduce uh, the person that have lived my life for the last 33 years and have put this effort together. Uh, I am not here just because. I am here because she has opened many spaces and she has been there for me. Good evening. In our speech, we are going to talk a little bit what we have been done and what we are doing, and to tell you why we are here, and thank you very much. Nearly 24 years ago, we came to Canada as refugees, and during that time, we have not only worked to champion the rights and protection of refugee populations, but also we have witnessed the ebb and flow of policies and responses to issues related to, to migrants and refugees. As the legal terrain 
that newcomers need to navigate is constantly changing. Accessing fair information becomes more and more important. For us, access to information means access to justice, access to knowledge, and the tools necessary to mobilize that knowledge and lead to integration. In only one kind of integration that is called successful integration. And we are one of the that examples. It means access to equity, access to civil society, wherever it is defined by them, access to social services and diverse arenas of support, access to fair and sustainable housing, access to healthcare, and despite the progress that has been made in the past, avenues to access have become increasingly narrow, particularly with the disturbing changes that have been taking place over the past year, as you know, with the changes on immigration that happened last year. And to respond to this, we have needed to invest considerable time and energy into straining our networks, and it's you. And becoming increasingly creative in building our capacity to promote access and keep the doors from fully closing. You see in the past who, how many are receiving the Pioneer Awards. And throughout this process, we have done our best to keep intersectionality and increasing access to information is a way for youth to tap into this existing power and steer their own course through the various integration process. We need to be, be careful because there are changes where youth will come only have access to come to Canada until they are 18 on family reunification. Right now they can come on family reunification when they are until 22 years. We need to keep that door open. Access to information for the diverse populations, we work with needs to be on the line with ideas of self-determination and self-identification. Pathways to access need to be paved with anti-oppression and positive spaces. Information needs to be readily available for members of diverse communities. And as we work together as a team, I want to introduce you, Francisco, that sends to Canada, I'm with him. Because if we don't have that open door, he won't be alive. Francisco. Um, I want to say thank you to Canada for one particular reason. I am a grandpa. <laughs> Can you imagine? I have a, and a grandpa, a weird. Um, uh, Cassandra, Zoe, Mateo. If, if I didn't come, if Canada doesn't rescue me, uh, that won't be possible. But the problem is that that, con that program that say my life is closed down. And people are not coming, people that are at risk, people that are almost killed, are not protected any longer. Canada is shutting down the door. How many people like me, dreaming to have a, a grandchild, is not going to happen. Democracy is not an accident. Democracy is built by people. And the Canadian people build options that are amazingly recognized in the world. But the world is changing, Canada is changing, and the door is closing. I am here, and we are here, representing people, newcomers, as we call them, refugee claimants, non status people. People that cross the border illegally and come to Canada. People that maybe are cleaning this building. People that maybe are going to have a refugee hearing tomorrow. And it's a doubt about the story that they are going to say. 
We are representing here people that the system marginalizes. We are representing people that come with a hope, but they don't entry for the big door. They entry for the backyard. We are here, both of us, working with people that they haven't raised the mainstream society in Canada yet. And they don't know if I will do. We are working with people, men, women, and children, that are expecting deportation from this country. We are working with people that go to the food banks. We are working with people that need your help as a society. And our idea is to stand here and say, please help us. Not by giving us money, but open your heart and your minds that humanity is one. And a passport and a color of the skin doesn't mean anything humanity. Help us to build one humanity. Help us to build the brain of God created one equal. Help us to open the doors for the poorest of the poor. Help us to give voice to the voiceless everywhere. That's why we are here. And we are not moving. We are here, and even though we have in the future and in the present, we see the doors closing, and even though you read in the newspaper that we have a government that is pro-immigrant, don't believe that, because they are closing the doors of the poorest of the poor. And it's very sad to come to this country 23 years ago and enjoy here to be with you. We came without English. I was a lawyer. I was. Maybe I am. <laughs> well, but not for this society. They don't recognize me as a such. I was teaching law in El Salvador. They don't recognize me as a professor of law. I have a master in economics, but maybe the numbers here are different. That they don't recognize me as an economist. So what do we do to open the door to the brothers and sisters that need our help? We have to start trusting. And give me just give you one example. When we were walking out of the plane, my wife and I and two children, my wife was pregnant, five months pregnant of our last boy that is a Canadian born since God. A family ahead of us from Latin America, from one of the Latin American countries said, walking after five or, or, or six steps in the airport, the man said, I hate this country. And he said to my wife, well, if he can say that he hates this country after five steps, I can say I love this country. An attitude is what opens doors. But it's not the attitude of one person, me, knocking the door. It's the attitude of the person that opened that door. It's the attitude of that person that say, here is a piece of bread. It's the attitude of that welcoming society that we built, and it's so well known internationally, that we are so well known that now we fall asleep and we are living from that past. We have to pick up our past. Please, our anthem, as I said, you know, we stand for you, for thee. We always said, Loli and I, migrants, non-status, refugees, young people that don't have future, we stand for you. Thank you very much.